This is Man, Man vs. Mood. Mood. We are all together. We are all here. We are all together well. Again. Back in the saddle. I think our health is far better than it has been. We've been kind of a walking mash unit for the last month, mm. give yeah. or take. Mm. Yep. We haven't been together in, what, almost two weeks now? We're the uh, Blazers, basically. Yes, a mash <laughs> unit for sure. The uh, shout out to Damien. Hopefully he gets better soon. CJ's back, though. CJ's back. That's a good thing. We have some big news that uh, we're going to be announcing on the show. Yeah. A change to the show, just location-wise, but we'll still all be together just through the magic of technology. Jen, you want to go ahead and take it away before yeah. we get into it? Um, I'm moving to Arizona. AZ in the house. <laughs> I'm still kind of in shock because I only lived, I lived in Utah for about 11 months. Other than that, I've lived in the Pacific Northwest my whole life. And so this is going to be a little bit of a change. I mean, I love the desert. It's like either temperate rainforest or desert. I, lo- I, I would prefer one or the other. So I guess we're going to find out if I really feel that way. Now. Yeah. I, have you been there during the 115s and mm-hmm. stuff like that? Yeah. When I was in college, I road tripped when I lived in Utah and I road tripped road to trip. Phoenix for Warp Tour. <laughs> in oh, nice. June. Wow. How, tell it me you're a 90s so kid with, uh, without, without telling me you're a 90s, 90s kid. kid. I know. I drove my unair conditioned truck down in June. Yeah. I think I had, once I got just past the Arizona, well, I, I guess I was past like Flagstaff and stuff like that, my truck kept overheating. Oh, wow. Because <laughs> it was like a 92. And it was, I was like 12 years old at the time, 12, 13 years old. Anyway, I was just like, so we just have to make it to the house that we're going to like we're staying at a friend's house we made it it was fine but warp tour outside in june in arizona Ooh, brutal okay give brutal. us the rundown who was on the warp tour that year um i was actually going because a friend of mine was in a band that was playing so oh, it was really? called scaring scary kids scaring kids and they got close to semi big um and then how do you lead get singer. close to it they they had a record deal and they had huh. um their original like tour and EP that they made and then they got picked up. I can't remember which record label. They made a record and their lead singer died. Oh, I see. I had a feeling based on the yeah. way you said you were looking at me that that it was it was there. a tragedy. It was honestly really tragic. Um, was... But we went down to go support them and I honestly don't remember the other bands that were there. Like I actually listened to most of the bands that were there, but I was so flipping hot the whole time I was there. I mean, it was like, and they ran out of bottled water in the venue. I mean, it was. And you can't drink the water in Arizona. No, wow. absolutely okay. not. That's really? going to be something to get used to. Definitely not. Why, I know. Why is that? I learn learn me. Why? It's like disgusting. Yeah, it's disgusting. Like we're so yeah. lucky here to have like decent water and like like I went there when I was in college and we just landed and I like got to the hotel put my cup under the sink like <laughs> brown put, yeah well it, it wasn't brown but I tried it and I just spit it out it's and like I, chemicals I rolled on the ground a, a little bit and then uh <laughs> like a couple minutes later the coach was like don't anybody drink the water like we got you bottled water so I was like yeah is it from the Colorado time. like in Vegas Couldn't, it's like, from their sewer plant yeah right. <laughs> it's, no, it's from, from the uh, Willamette River. It's great. <laughs> yeah, it's just disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> For anyone that is uh, listening and doesn't know why we make a joke about the Willamette River, it's because when the rain starts to fall heavily in the Pacific Northwest, the sewage likes to eject itself mm-hmm. out of the Portland sewer system into the Willamette River, and then they every time they uh, run a story on the news, like watch the shit flow uh-huh. into the public waterway. They're being oh. serious. Yeah. Oh, it's 100% serious. And, and I know that because I, I, yeah, right? It's like, rise. Right? So I grew up swimming in that and sea dew and fishing and good times. <laughs> we've all been, we've all been there. It's safe by, you know, April, uh, probably May, yeah. Yeah. May through September. I think yeah. you're probably pretty safe. Yeah. September you go, though. Yeah. yeah. It starts to go kind of haywire in September. Oh, kind yeah. Brown. Because everyone's been pissing in it all summer long <laughs> while true. they've been out there doing what? their water sports. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's fun with waterways here at Man vs. Mood. You never know what you're going to learn when you listen to our show. That's what I'm thankful for is the Willamette River. <laughs> <laughs> all yeah, the memories. Exactly. The memories. Stand up paddleboard. Just make sure you don't go down. <laughs> Speaking of blessings, though, uh, seriously, let's start on my right here, Jen, because we haven't been together. What are mm-hmm. we feeling blessed for other than your gigantic life? 
life change yeah, that came about in in the order of what two weeks so Quick. fast yeah, yeah it was very like fast three weeks from when because it's for my husband's job and so it was it, they approached us him on like a saturday and two days later i came down with covid and it was basically like hey like we'd really love to like fly you and your wife down i mean they went straight to like we're gonna and how we, did they find him friend of a friend really yeah it's just kind of yeah networking well and there's like a huge working shortage Mm -hmm. everywhere right but arizona is especially bad in like commercial hvac mechanical electrical plumbing blah 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 in project management because project management is such a like tribal knowledge like you kind of have to be in the industry for a while to be able to manage big stuff Mm -hmm. and there's just not enough there's not enough work for how much or not enough workers for how much work there is it's like (laughs) the owner said to me yeah if you took a funnel and walked outside like it was raining that it's like the industry right now like everybody's just trying to catch what they can and it's like they're all, anyway so they just i don't know they came out with a really strong offer but it's been interesting through that process because job change moving got covid missed out on all the holiday stuff mm-hmm. like came back i was thankful my kids could go to school and like so i've had like this massive roller coaster for weeks now where i'm like I'm, but really this week, I actually, I'm really so grateful for friends and it's been really interesting as the news has popped out, how people have reacted to it. Really? Yeah. Like it's good, bad, indifferent. It's either, it's either sad, jealousy or take me with you. <laughs> how Jealousy. Can you explain that a little bit more? That's crazy. Yeah. Well, the jealousy hasn't been like nefarious. It's always just been, they go, oh wow. Like when are you leaving? They hear the story and then they kind of pause and they go man i'm so jealous and they admit it like out loud Mm -hmm. and it's surprising me how many people are saying that i think everybody's kind of sick of the weather at this point and well i do know a realtor that will help them sell their house and move down to arizona (laughs) right i know like i'm not worried at all so and, and it's just so i'm really grateful for friends and as I'm like giving stuff away, like I feel like I'm giving things away at nauseum right now because I'm like, you just get rid want, of it. Yeah, everybody wants some couches. I got some really good couches that I'm not using. I'm not taking with me. Like, what? I've got so much stuff that I'm just I'm like, you know what? It's fine. We're we're gonna start over with a lot of this stuff. So I'm in like offloading mode. I'm selling my car. Does anybody really want a Rav? Like, cause anyway, I'd rather just sell it to somebody than deal with the brouhaha putting it up on the market but anyways so i'm just really grateful for people in my life i wish i could take them all with me and actually i'm surprised at how many people already have plans to go to arizona that are like let's totally get together and have a meal and i'm like yes i would love to see a familiar face that's awesome i know i'm really excited about that something to look forward to so you guys have a mover that's gonna handle it all for you we're doing pods oh yeah so that'll be interesting (laughs) but we're we're basically doing most of it by ourselves i mean we've got a really great moving package but we're trying to be as frugal as we can with it and Mm -hmm. be smart with it but we've decided we're going to rent the first year we thought we'd buy don't recommend trying to do that when you barely know the state you're going to it was like a week of so much anxiety i was like i can't (laughs) do this so i'm glad we're going to rent i'm looking forward to we're we're like two seconds away from locking in the rental like we'll we'll know by tomorrow morning or tonight oh good and so it's a really good location it's great schools but it's the the sad part of leaving friends i know i'll make friends i know i'll meet people but you know it's a major deal it's a major deal to have the gun to your head that fast i've been gosh I'm moving, going along with you and, and I really like to put myself in other people's shoes to mm-hmm. imagine what it is like to go through the sickness, so go emotional. through the, Hey, let's, let's talk to, we need you here in a month and yeah. we need you to move your entire family. We need you to have your kids pulled out of school mid year, so on and so it's forth. Crazy. And that's, it's a lot to wrap your mind around Mm -hmm. when, when you think of that. And sometimes we get caught up in the moment. We get excited um, because it's an adventure and Mm -hmm. and you got to lean into the adventure part of it. Otherwise you're completely overwhelmed. Oh my gosh. But it's still, uh, I wouldn't say scary because that isn't the type of thing that scares me, but it it is nerve wracking because you know that in the back of your mind, you have a little checklist of, 11 million things like I need to get rid of the car or I oh don't want to break, you know, great aunt Susie's vase that she gave me 42 oh years ago. What whatever. am I willing to keep? What am I willing mm-hmm. to like offload? Because everything's going to be about weight with pods. Yeah. One whole pod is just Christmas stuff, huh? 
Yeah. Oh, for, <laughs> and <laughs> and pianos. No, uh, separate se- separate moving and storage situation for the piano. Getting really? rid of one piano, which kind of pains me because it's my you piano. You have two pianos. Yeah, we have an upright yeah. and a grand. Because if you don't have one, you need two. <laughs> well, we had two households we combined. I was I was living on my own for ten years before we started the conversation with my parents. So it's like I had an upright, and it's been in my family for four generations. Oh wow! Are you and getting it, rid of it? Oh, it just makes me physically ill. I'm like, but how come? Um, cause it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to keep moving two pianos, <laughs> to be honest. That's very true. And I love the grand piano. I play the grand piano more than I play the upright. And I, it, I don't think I, it'd be so hard to get, we actually, my mom tried to get rid of the grand when she moved here and mm-hmm. it was in California for almost a year at a consignment shop at a specialty, like piano consignment shop. And they couldn't sell it in California where it was like super close to LA Lots of people with talent, that, especially musical talent. Anyway, yeah, it was just so... I want to keep the grand, but it's a very different... Like, you have to get a specialty mover that will take off the legs, turn it on its side, put it in temperature-controlled storage. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. There's a lot that goes with it. Oh, my gosh. But um, And then I'm getting on an airplane, and my dad and my husband are driving vehicles. Oh, okay. So... I'm really grateful that I'm not driving. <laughs> this is like yeah, a, it's yeah, like it's a 22 hour too, drive. Yeah. I'm like, mm. it's how long? 22. 22 hours. I've done it. It's not too like? bad, but it's not too different from Vegas either. I've driven to Vegas too. And Anaheim from here, which is really far. Yeah. I've driven from Riverside up here or well, LA. Yeah. So I guess I'm just, I'm just grateful for good people in my life. You know, uh, I'm glad you guys weren't like, oh, too bad, you're out. Yeah, no. I, had to, I cried and rocked myself to sleep at night. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, I actually rocked him to sleep, FYI. Yeah, exactly. And I've got the I photos because I was standing in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, I know. We had, we had a little thing, you know, we're like, Jen, sleep. Sleeping. And I told you guys early. I, I told you guys. Some shots, you know. Yeah. I actually honestly didn't expect it to work out. Because it just felt... Yeah, you did, Because it was going so fast. <laughs> no, I, I did not expect the February time frame. Yeah. I'm like, that is very aggressive. I, maybe yeah. Sky would go down there and cop an apartment for a few months while you Figure finished everything. Out. Yeah, but... But they get a... It just... When it came down to it, it actually was more about the kids' schedule. Because, like, they get a school the second week in May. Mm-hmm. And it was like, okay... And, and honestly, it had a little bit to do with um, my son's ability to play baseball. It's like, we either leave now yeah. and get him into baseball down there or we wait until june and i'm like i am not doing that that that's too that will drive me crazy being a split like that yeah and having him fly home all the time and and i just was like okay i mean it's possible but makes me want to cry on a daily basis you guys see we have a dry erase board with a like a made-up calendar in it and it's like filled out every day like today was get the rav ready to sell day and i got close until it started raining <laughs> stupid Midwest. stupid rain i got i got close to finishing it up but i don't know like it's just it's a lot yep it is so a lot. We're, i'm just grateful to have the consistency of still recording with you guys because like i think if you if you've never done a big move before i've only done it the one time i felt completely afloat for like three months there was it was like a three month like I don't know where I'm going. I don't know who, what I'm doing. I don't. You don't know where anything is. Granted, it's a little different with GPS now, with like Google Maps. Like, <laughs> like when I did it back when there wasn't anything, and then back in the old days, the Stone Age, yeah. before we had phones, the Thompson yeah. God or whatever. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. Map Quest. Yeah. Map oh, Quest. Man. Do not. Trust That's how I got to Arizona. Quest. <laughs> a map Quest on a piece of paper via, and a map via South Texas. Oh, missed gosh. a turn <laughs> well that's uh that's anyway. very exciting and it is a great blessing to have friends and and people that understand and are supportive yeah that, that's what makes these major life changes so uh by the way there's a going away party I had a oh. friend that came by and was like i want to throw you going away party nobody's ever asked to do that for me before nobody's ever you've never gone away i <laughs> have I'm but sure. not far okay and so people just you know but this one i don't know it's just people's reactions are so different i already get people like asking me when they can come by and help pack and like i don't know it just wasn't what i was expecting like but i've also built some great foundational friendships here so yeah. i don't know what i expected like what <laughs> you didn't because that wasn't top of mind you were concerned about probably job kids Basic and needs. then <laughs> you move out yeah exactly and then yeah. you move out from there that's uh, very exciting i'm gonna move to my left mike I think I know what you're going to be thankful for, but go ahead and uh, maybe you've got a number of things, but I'm thankful that you're feeling better. 
Yeah, that was brutal. <laughs> you think? I probably got the Delta Cron or something. I don't know. Yeah, Delta think- Cron. <laughs> <laughs> Omi Delta. I think you had all of you. Know, you may have had flu Rona, which is not a joke. The flu and Maybe. Corona exactly. together. I felt like shit for. Your symptoms were a lot like mine. Fourteen days, fifteen days. Yeah, yeah you were like the first day. I really feel human. A hundred percent. <laughs> no, still not a hundred. Ninety. Once I kick the the cough and all the junk in my lungs, then see that's I'll feel better. The w- I didn't have a cough. Did you? A little bit. I. Don't know why I didn't. Oh man, you you and I had really similar symptoms. It was awful. Yeah, you probably gave it to us when you came over the last time. I know. We I, well, we <laughs> went through the timeline at it some point, and I was fast. like, I don't know how it's possible because I was like date fourteen when we recorded. At, like, I mean, this is distanced, really. Yeah. Anyway, no, I, I, I was almost better by fourteen. Michelle's son went to a um, a New Year's party, and there was kids that had COVID there. I guess uh, come to find out, and then Bree, my oldest, went to a a party as well and ah. there's kids that had COVID there Dang good times. Michelle and I stayed in you know going oh well, we're gonna be cares? safe who gives a crap about New Year's and uh right. yeah no so we uh, I came down with it well I and I got my booster shot so I don't think that helped in fact I was thinking the, about that how the that third, impacted you I got the booster on the fourth I started feeling crappy I'm like oh it's probably just a reaction to that nope no nope. I must have got it the first or second you were in and incubation it, when you got yep. boosted. <clears throat> and that just dropped my immune system even lower. So, yeah, it was fun. But, no, that's Joy. not what I'm grateful for. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm actually grateful for still having my sports cards from when I was a kid. <laughs> To see you the, have with there for you guys can't see it, but they are strewn about the living room. Mm-hmm. Well, they're uh, more on the dining old it's dining like a camping table. Rocking chair, you've been Jackie sitting there Robinson. for a while. Huh? <laughs> what else did you have? You had Willie yeah. What, what, let's hear what some, some of your Robinson, highlights are. Some Willie Mays, some old Mike Willie Mays Hayes or Willie Mays. <laughs> uh, and I have a Hank Aaron and Willie Mays card, a Mickey Mantle. Those are some of my like old old cards. But like I have some new ones that are from like Luka Doncic, really nice. know, however you say his name. But it's one that if I send in to get graded, which is if you don't know what grading is, grading is where you send the card in, they look at it and they give it a a perfect score. Or they give it, you know, it's in half increments from zero to ten. Ten being the best. Um, if it comes back with a high rating, that card will be five times more than what it is as a considered as a raw card, not graded card. Really? Yeah, okay. So the Luca card, for example, that has value already? I yeah. Mean, yeah, the, the value on it already is about 250 bucks. No kidding? What year is it? Uh, I don't know anything it's, it's about it. It's a rookie st- card, so. Okay. Two years ago? Yeah. <laughs> 2017, I think it was, 2018. Really? So, and you just bought a pack? or were Yeah, you- I bought a, a, a box and opened the box and it came in that box. Wow. Hopefully. And then I've, I've actually found some other places um, f- that I bought some cards on some auctions or some auction, some auctions and uh, a Patrick Mahomes rookie card came in that. That's oh, about a thousand dollar card. Wow. No way. I uh, got another another auction I bid on and spent about 500 bucks. But I got a Kobe Bryant rookie card. Oh, my God. Wow. So these are all. Ones How much I'm, is that worth? Uh, that card by itself, I think it was like eleven hundred dollars. Yeah, no kidding. So wow, wow. And if it's graded quality, that's as a raw. That's just raw. If you grade it, that card's probably about fifty five hundred. No kidding. Yeah. Wow, I guess I'm missing out on this. I <laughs> the only thing I know about sports cards is that Logan Paul bought a three and a half million dollar oh box God. of paperweight. That was crazy. Right. But the box, he's an the idiot. box I want, or the the cards that I'm trying to find, are nineteen eighty six Fleer. Oh, I have a bunch of those. I'm For, I know not I baseball, basketball. Oh, no, I don't hmm. need basketball. Eighty six, huh? Yeah, you want to know why? Why? Sure. Michael Jordan rookie card. Oh, okay. <laughs> that rookie card, two hundred and twenty thousand dollars if it's a mint, like ten rated ten. No kidding. Well, Holy, what? Well, then but finding it. those boxes, good luck. Yeah. yeah, haystack. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, I love looking through my cards and. Just kind of see what I have, and then I've also made some packs that I'm going to give out to some kids, and because I have a ton of commons, yeah. So might as well get some kids in the, you know, yeah, get them into the, the game. card yeah. world. Man, yeah. that was so big. Like oh. when I was a little kid, yeah. like cards and um, 
uh, Pogs. Pogs. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. I didn't. I, I wasn't Pogs. as big into Pogs, but <laughs> I was into Pogs. Yeah. You were probably was... into those Beanie Babies, huh? My mom was until she bought them for me, and I still have a bunch of them because I, I. Part of it's the sentimentality that she yeah. bought it for me, and I'm like. They still have the little tag covers on them. Oh, They're wow. probably worth something. But. Well, I know one of the I'm things sure. during our show where I saw on the show notes where we talk about hobbies and, man, I'll talk about cards any day. That's awesome. <laughs> well, it's it's something that is kind of a rite of passage if you're into sports as a kid, at least back in the 80s mm-hmm. for me. And I followed all the teams, but I was, like, super crazy about it. I was telling Mike when I got here that I had – teams broken down by league i had a big binder of national league big binder of al (laughs) and then i had each team and then i had all the if i had multiples like don mattingly is my favorite player so i have like 63 of his cards so i have all of those in the yankees but and then i have just cases of other cards that i I got some mattingly's that you can have really i one i think is his rookie card really i i have Damn. I think I have one of his rookie cards. I found a bunch of King Griffey Jr. rookie cards yeah. I had no idea I had, and they're yeah. all, like, the corners are perfect. I'm just like, oh. It's I've my favorite a... baseball player. Griffey? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm glad that I... It's the one I, I grew this... up on. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. What kid. I'm grateful for, too, is mm-hmm. collecting basketball, football, and baseball. It wasn't just one sport. It was yeah. those three sports is what I collected. Yeah. So I have a bunch of air cards, some Bo Jacksons. Oh, some... wow. Yeah. Going that's through so it, cool. it, was just, it was pretty cool to go through it. Just nostalgia yeah that's that's what i mean i i went through mine not too long ago and i can remember going through and and doing this and i remember that's where i started to learn how to trade and and do deals because we would make yeah we would negotiate i remember you know like greg jeffrey's rated rookie his 88 don russell i believe it was or 87 but doing those kinds of things making you know like five cards for three cards <laughs> or something like that and it yeah. was on the street block and then you'd take the commons and you'd put them in your bike tire and, yeah. and <laughs> all kinds of fun stuff and like the, that the thing about it if you think about it you know when you're i'm in the investing and stuff like that but really when you're buying getting rookie cards you never know who's gonna hit yeah. and make it no. and be a hall of fame player you know who knew that well, Kobe and LeBron, as they came out, yeah. they were already hyped up. But like Dontich, though, yeah, yeah, who knew no he was going to be awesome? Yeah. Or Trey Young, yeah. or Damian or Lillard, right. right? Dude, a second round draft pick—that's so crazy. Yeah. So you just, and then if you have a bunch of those cards, you just kind of hold on to them and see what happens. Yeah, yeah. And it's becoming. Um, I think Gary V has really helped it, mm-hmm. but. It has become a huge secondary market now. Yeah. COVID and helped that a lot too. Yeah, you're exactly right. And then that's bleeding into NFTs because as people begin to learn about NFTs, they ask, well, what is it? And the way I describe it is it's basically a digital baseball card. You have that card and you own it. Yeah, people could take a picture of the card and right click, if you will, in the digital world. Yeah. But that's what you own that in perpetuity even i mean it's even more rare because in baseball or basketball cards you might get four of them out of all that they print that is the luca um or if you bought the set but it's not a numbered card unfortunately but i do have some number cards i did oh i'm sorry jen's probably bored out of her mind listening to this (laughs) but i opened a box that i bought not long ago before skyrocketing prices on the cards and I got a one of one Josh Allen rookie card. Oh wow. For the Buffalo Bills. Yeah. I have no idea what it's worth because I can't look it up. There's it's the only card. You better hope that he wins the Super Bowl this year. No. Well, I He's think. already it's already pretty yeah, good. Yeah, it's got to uh, be worth yeah. it. So you have to get it graded in order to I'm value it. I'm going to. I'm going to cuz it, it looks pretty good to me, but I'm going to take it to a card shop and have him to right? look at yeah. it. Yeah, it's the only card it meant. That's that the only card they that printed. It's going to be pretty unique. Yeah. Right? I'm like, yeah, it's yeah. the only one. This sounds expensive. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll incredible. see. If he if he does win the Super Bowl, then it's going to go. That uh-huh. card's going to shoot up. Uh-huh. Put it I didn't even case. know they Don't touch the did edges. that kind of thing. I have a safe. The, <laughs> the one of one. I, but like I said, I'm, I've been out of the loop for so long. That, and I don't trust any of the values. Like, like I have a couple of Ken Griffey's uh, rookie. Um, upper deck 
I have no idea if those are even valuable anymore compared to because when you look it up at you know four bucks or something like that but i i can't trust the outlet even though beckett says they're the you gotta i think you have to buy like beckett premium or something like that to get most of the values it's yeah. been a while but <clears throat> anyway gary what do you got for us what are you thankful for this fine day i mean i'm thankful that we're all just here honestly yep um so i'm thankful for like positive energies and stuff like that uh Right after I got off work, like I talked with a, a friend that I haven't talked to in quite some time, and we just had like a really good conversation, um, and um, so it was good. So it's good just to have that. So I'm so I'm thankful we started our weight loss wars and everything. I'm down 15 pounds or something. What? Like that. Nice. Are you yeah. serious? Five more pounds yeah. since last time we yeah. talked. I'm down 12. <laughs> yeah, but in you get weeks. you went on a diet. <laughs> it's called the vid diet. Yeah, <laughs> right. The Rona. Right. And uh, so yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's just nice just to like set some goals, you know, and, and uh, attain those goals and stuff like that. Like I've been trying to get, you know. 16,000 steps per day, uh, five to six days per week and make sure, you know, that I'm going to the gym. My, uh, roommate's been forcing me to go to the gym more, which is good. Um, so yeah, we so. need to do, uh, we need to on our watches, we need to do competitions cause That's fine. I will, I will push you. Let's do it. You, you, I you set it up and you'll, you, oh, yeah, set it yeah. up. all I have to yeah. do is put it on there. I love yeah. doing that though. Mine says new watch. Who dis? <laughs> <laughs> Yours says crickets. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. But uh, no, those are all fun. But yeah. Well, but yeah, good. like for me, like it's like, it's just fun just to do things like this. And I just think that, um, you know, like a couple episodes ago when we talked about doing this, like it really pushed me to like, be like, okay you're going to lose weight, you're going to do this, you're going to be healthier. And it's like, now I feel so much better. You do. You, yeah, you begin to notice it, Mike, you'll notice it once you've got the fog of one day. And then the next day I got sick and I'm like, why are you fucking kidding me? Right. (laughs) We were talking about that the other day, but that, that feeling that you just talked about, I've actually had that because I went kind of off the deep end for, the holidays and eh, it's fine whatever it doesn't bother me but i i I ate way more sugar yeah then and sugar and me do not get along very well Mm -hmm. um talk about brain fog that's (laughs) what sugar does to me in a major major way Mm -hmm. and so i was looking forward to that being gone and so i got back down to my normal sugar intake which isn't that much and then i cut it even more Mm -hmm. and it's almost like it rejuvenates your energy level because what sugar does to your body and how much it how much it just it boggles your mind in the in the just the chemical reaction when you have too much sugar Mm -hmm. and if you don't burn it off and things like that and so for me to cut that most people wouldn't like it i love it i just because i feel so much more energetic and even when i was sick i i didn't it didn't bother me that much because it, I don't know, it, I, I didn't have it like you guys did. And you and I had more along the lines of just kind of a pain in the ass than yeah. anything. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I really like that. And the feeling that of, I just feel cleaner. It's yeah. like having a, a, you know, when you go camping and you're like three days out and you, you got the sticky all over you from the campfire and there's some mustache in your <laughs> or not mustache you got marshmallow, marshmallow. in your beard yeah, and yeah. you're just kind you of some sticky. mustache in your marshmallow yeah <laughs> hello <clears throat> anyway Don't i'm gonna leave that one alone yeah yeah <laughs> it, was, it was toasty anyway so i i uh, i just it just felt so clean to get yeah. it out of me and and yeah. and I, I like to fast too yeah i usually like sunday night from six till monday night at six i'll fast and when i come out of that if i go like 36 hours that's it's almost like a high feeling to me i I love it for me like during the the work week like what i've been doing is i will stop eating like the previous night at like 6 p.m or 7 p.m and then i won't eat until i get home so Mm -hmm. um i might have like something small like an apple or like or something like that but i've just found that it like for me it works like i'm not gonna do it forever like i'm doing it just to like kind of reset my body and like yep. i just feel so much better like my joints feel a lot better i have a lot more energy and now you know like i find myself feeling worse on my days off 
when I'm just sitting around and I'm not doing shit. Like I'm just yep. being lazy and stuff like that. And it's so interesting. Like yesterday, like I was just like being lazy and not really doing anything. And then like I went to the gym, like with my roommate. And once I got back, I was like, damn, I feel so much better. Like I'm happier. I have more energy and just, yeah. So yeah, it's like it, it's, it's good. Like, I love it. I'm so happy. You're so. going to hold some pretty serious boundaries around it now. Yeah. Because, like, there's a certain oh. point where you're like, okay, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense for my schedule, but I don't care. Yeah. I'm doing it. Uh-huh. Like, I'm getting to the gym. I'm, uh-huh. Like, when you get to that point, it's, yeah. like, super habit forming. Oh, right. right. Like, for me, like, I love going to the gym in the morning. Like, there's nothing better than, mm-hmm. like, starting your day out, throwing some weight around and going from there. But now I, like, start work at, like, 4 o'clock in the morning. So. That's tough. I just don't. I just don't think that I could get in. I mean, I could, but I don't. I don't think that I could get in at like two o'clock or two thirty. I don't. Know. <laughs> I yeah, wouldn't do absolutely that. not. It's no, brutal. I I, yeah. I agree with that, but to your point, I am like that. Where yeah. I I rearrange everything in my life around yeah. the gym. Yeah, but that's, that's why awesome. I go at five o'clock in the morning. Yeah, so yeah. that it I don't have to worry about that. But, that's beautiful. Oh, it. I mean, you can ask my family. I'm. Yeah. I'm there's nothing else that I will plan around like that. Yeah. And if I'm not home or if I'm on, like if we're in central Oregon, I'm, I drag them everywhere I go. And if they don't, I, sometimes I tell them, okay, I got to go, I got to kick it up a notch. And uh, they'll just stay home. Cause they don't want to go as fast as me. I miss those days. And yeah. so it's, uh, it just, is. it's, that's why I encourage everyone you don't have to go to a gym either in fact in the when i dropped the last episode i wrote in their point of disgust and and for that episode that my major thing was i just got out and walked around the neighborhood because a lot of people that will be a barrier to entry oh i gotta go to a gym now bullshit yeah just go hike your ass around the neighborhood and do some squat thrusts and burpees yeah it's it's the same mentality and then you because for me I, I wasn't in shape enough to go to the gym i had to work myself into that but once you build that up and it becomes that habit you, you don't have to be like me or or anyone else yeah, you yeah. just have to do what gets you motivated and gets that change going in your mind yeah. so that like jen said it becomes that habit that and it's not runner's high or anything like that. I think that's a misnomer. I've never it's, experienced that. No, I, I mean, I, I I definitely feel good when I'm doing it, but yeah. I despise the treadmill. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I just, I glare at it every fucking day. Like, it's disgusting. You, oh, it's mm. terrible. Yeah. Terrible machine. Yeah. It's horrible. I'm the only time I ever got rat. into running was when I was in really good shape already, and I got forced into it. Yeah. <laughs> and I yeah. was like, all right, fine. And I did it daily. It was when I was doing competitive cheer and mm-hmm. it was like our coach was just obsessive about running because she loved to run. Oh. <sighs> and it so took let me project a solid that year. Upon you. Yeah, it took a solid year of like running mile to two miles every day mm-hmm. before practice. Mm, like she yeah. was nuts. Yeah. <laughs> like but to Were this you doing day, stairs and stuff too? Yeah, because we had to run loops in the school because it was so bad outside. So we would run upstairs to the second floor and then come back down the other side and the first floor. And we would just do, and it was a lot of stairs. <laughs> uh, for me, like, it's always been difficult to, like, stay in shape, like, year round because I've just been so, like, programmed just to be in shape for basketball and that's it. And then, mm. and then once, like, basketball's over, it's back to Costco pizzas and chicken and everything that's bad for me so it's like now like i'm trying to like just not be in like optimal shape but just you know you want to create a lifestyle yeah exactly like like i want to be healthy because i want my son to like see me healthy and like i don't know to like go to the gym and work out and stuff like that and like it's just interesting i don't know like when your body moves your brain grooves oh and yeah and it's so well, you come up with the you come i don't know if you have a book of riddles or or <laughs> what but you've got a number of those that you you drop i i like mm-hmm. that he's not like for, and he shows it no like for me like <laughs> dropping bars right <laughs> yeah 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 give but me no. 16 of them <laughs> but no like for me like that's just like I have to think of those things like when i'm going through you know like a certain time you know like yep. to get my you know like before like I talked about my like PF my like psychological fortitude test that I'll do you know within myself whether I'm at work whether I'm at the gym whether I'm you know just depressed or having a down day or whatever like I think of these little sayings and stuff like that or or or, you know it's just stuff that I've heard just to get me back to where I need to be 
you know, like a, my optimal, just, you know, like brain function mindset. or whatever. Exactly. I mean, really, it is. It's a mindset. Yeah. And, and for me, like, I just remember shit like that. It's, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but it's a lot of Jim Quick. He's great, man. I'm telling you guys, I love that guy. And, and humble the poet too, for sure. Yep. So. I've been checking him out on Twitter. I started yeah. following him. And yeah. But that's each of us kind of finds that when it doesn't have to necessarily even be in exercising. But in our life, we find hooks that yeah. keep us. If you're into knitting, there's probably a, a type of knitting that you like to do and you follow that type. And and I don't know if there's types of knitting, but yeah. it's things that because we want to reinforce those positive things in our mind. So in real estate, it no, there are no, there's nothing positive about real estate. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, I was like, what's yeah, he going to say here? <laughs> no, I, got, I don't have anything. I spent way too much fucking time in that world. But no, it's uh, it, it just to make it easier. Like when I tackled my weight, I created three rules so that I never could go off track. Because if I can remember three rules, then there's no other I, I, that's my rails yeah you and took out the decision like we exactly about. Yeah, yeah you like made I less decision yep yeah. yeah that's exactly right uh i'll get we'll get on with the show here rather than breaking down <laughs> yeah that was the longest uh <laughs> intro, longest yeah. intro ever, intro ever. <laughs> what happens when we spend two weeks apart exactly <laughs> i loved uh, it though yes I it's all it. about you gary <laughs> I'm bowing now. <laughs> I am. Uh, I'm thankful. My son turned 16 yesterday. Okay. Oh wow! And that you know was kind of a rite of passage, and he'll be doing uh, driver's ed and and whatnot. But it's you know it's that first kind of step to adulthood and 16 manhood. 16 feels and big. It it's it not does. you know we we actually talked about that the you, these moments as we move through life because you know then you got 18 then you got 21 and after 21 it's like you got 25 and you can rent a car but it's kind of all downhill from you hit there. 25 and you go oh, that's wait like you're 40 and you're like Ugh. this was a <laughs> trap <laughs> it's a setup somebody yeah. mm-hmm. and 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 the thing that i always think of because you know my oldest is 22 so i've been through this one time but you see these these little baby steps but they happen so quickly for us as the adults because it feels like yesterday literally he was you know 16 years ago today he was sleeping on my chest at home because it you know my wife no she came home the yeah that might have been the next day maybe it was two days so 16 years and one day from now but he slept on my chest and i blink and he can drive a car and He's it's six crazy. two, and yeah. I mean it. Yeah. It's incredibly um, uh, uh, crazy for me to think about how fast life has moved from yeah. that moment until you know today we're sitting here, and and that journey that you know we get to go on as parents, and how when you're not a parent, it's hard to make that that connection with somebody um, to understand what parenthood really is like and and the emotion and and all of that so yeah. anyway took him out to feast he'd never been to a restaurant that nice he uh, got the tomahawk and the sizzling plate and oh, nice. he ate all of it 24 ounce steak <laughs> full brussels sprouts the dessert some potatoes part of my salad 16 year old boy oh that's Goodness. amazing good oh, for him yeah. he put in work yeah and he had <laughs> So every year for the boy's birthday, they always want my wife to make uh, her donut holes. She <laughs> makes fresh donut holes. And so he had a whole batch of those. Uh, it's just incredible. I yeah. mean, they're just endless pits. Of, of <laughs> Oh, boy, I'm bracing man. myself. Oh, you should, both of you. Mine just turned 12. I'm yeah, like, dude, you're starting. And Michelle's son, Logan, oh, my God, that kid can eat. And yeah. he's like, he just pounded like. I don't know, three plates of spaghetti is like, I'm hungry still. Yeah. Like, no, are you kidding me? Where are you putting this? How? They'll get up from dinner. We'll clean up dinner. 
they'll have put you know three meals what I've eaten yeah. away, yeah. and an hour later you hear shit just clang. You know, there's <laughs> cupboards and you're the like, fridge. are you bored or are you hungry? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> are you making a song out here? Like, what the no, hell? they're making a sandwich. Yeah. Like, oh, I gotta make a triple decker. I haven't eaten in an hour and a half. Yeah. Like, what the hell? There's a pound and a half of roast beef on there. You know, is there any more in there? Can I get some ham? <laughs> My goodness. But anyway, so it's uh, uh, yeah, it's exciting. It's scary though too because. Mm-hmm. You know, the new drivers are, that's a white knuckling oh, experience. Tell me about it. Yeah, no. Man. So yeah. I, I told my son, I'm like, just because he got a, got his license in October and then he had a car and stuff like that already. Mm-hmm. So, so he's been out driving and I'm like, <laughs> just be careful, like calm down. And like, I'll leave him, like I'll hear him leaving my house just and and one day hopefully he 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 told his mom this but one day he <laughs> if he didn't <laughs> he did <laughs> she'll find out but he just shows up to my house and he's like i like he goes i hit something and i'm like so what happened and something like, or someone he like, goes be more right right i'm like is this a story that i'm gonna want to not know like do we have to go wash the right blood right, off the car? right. Oh, yeah. like is there hair on your car like is america's what? most wanted yeah. gonna be looking for yeah right and uh he goes yeah you know like i i barely just backed into something so i'm like oh okay whatever so then we go to sleep. <laughs> I wake up the next morning. I look outside. Like, I look at his car. Like, I'm walking by. And I look and I look again. And I'm like, it's a pretty good sized dent, like, to his car. It wasn't a tap. No, no. Like, I, I walked in and I'm like, wake up. Like, there's a difference between a scratch and a dent. Like, what are we really doing here? And he was like, just, it's it's okay. You know, like, downplaying everything. And. Hopefully his mom knows, but I mean, he's like, I-, I couldn't see. There was, you know, like a big guy like sitting behind me and yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, we need to yeah. work on your driving skills and your backing skills. Cause, and your uh, communication skills. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that too. Yeah. I, I didn't even think about that, but yeah, that's true. <laughs> I but, was like, dude, if my kid came in and be like, I hit something, I'd be like, okay, more specific please yeah yeah like, um before i overreact <laughs> like did you bounce a deer off the front of the car yeah. or did, did you, you just like pull? Did you yeah. into a building did you yeah like, God. person but yeah he he was with his uh he, he was backing out like from a, a basketball game and he just hit a pole oh and pole one car zero Negative two. Yeah, negative two. <laughs> so there. i'm gonna own up to doing the exact same thing because I have an F-350 crew cab with a big lift and tires and everything. Mm-hmm. And I, there was a post too short from the, I couldn't see it. And I just drove forward and the truck st- stopped all of a sudden. <laughs> I'm oh, like, no. wait a minute, that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> and I hopped out and there was a post I didn't see. And I put a, I luckily it was just my bumper and I got a new bumper for it. But I was like. Yeah, it's kind of a that's a downfall of not being able to see everything. I need a front camera for it. But yeah, that was that was fun, and I had to hear some shit about that. But anyway, yeah, no, oh. it's uh, I, the the thing actually I've been thinking about this entire time though is the discussion if he hasn't and it going down like well dad said on his podcast that yeah yeah <laughs> and so i just i think that's kind of funny that <laughs> yeah. you might be throwing him under the bus he is he is if she doesn't know he is not going to be happy no. like i will never know about anything again in the future <laughs> <laughs> well that's uh that's fun that, that's a good time that's part of being a parent and, and oh, yeah. learning those new things and yeah. then it's also fun when they're you get a little bit older and yeah. and you they know that they're not going to get in trouble and that you you get to hear about more things right and you're like i'm just kind of glad i didn't know about that at the time. right exactly. as long as no one got hurt or it was anything illegal my or dad anything. has said that to me several times since living together oh yeah. there's yeah. stories that have come out and he's like Okay, glad I didn't know about that at the time. <laughs> well, we, we I think we all have those moments from our childhood. I don't have any of those moments. What? Really, Mike? Yeah, I was I your pants on fire. a great kid. Well, then the three <laughs> of no us problems. can... Do we want to share one of our stories? Right? No. <laughs> <laughs> if you ask no. my mom, she'll be like, 
You were he has perfect. stories. <laughs> you were a perfect child in your mind, though. Yeah, in my mind, I was perfect. Yeah. Well, let's get into the actual show and why we're here. And, and Jen kind of led us down this path already, kind of warmed us up. And, and talking about community and what it means to be a part of the commu- uh, a community, not necessarily the community mm-hmm. uh, as a general public, but what it means to be leaving and the the emotions that go in in recognizing the community that maybe and this is kind of the way i have thought about it and i've processed it that maybe you didn't know you were that big a part of that community and you kind of led to that a little bit in your in your intro and and how you i i would imagine we're kind of taken aback that so many people were reaching out were so concerned and and willing to show their love to you that maybe they didn't show you in the past. And, and what I think about that is that we need to remind each other how important each other's we are in each other's lives Mm -hmm. and, and that. So I, I thought that was a really good place for, and, and fit into what we've been wanting to talk about that, how, uh, how important it is to have that sense of community. Oh yeah. Like I think that, um, having people reach out and be like oh i hear you're moving where are you going like oh we we vacation down there we'd love to see you while we're down there and i'm like i mean i would love to see you it surprises me though like you don't quite realize i think we're all all humans on the planet well most of us are just really bad communicators yeah like i didn't know that i meant something to some of these people or i didn't know they even cared and all of a sudden i'm like well I would have loved to get to know you better. Like what? <laughs> so I think it's a little bit, and well, I think that being a human being, gender regardless, mm-hmm. it's kind of scary to put yourself out there, even on a friendship level, because for whatever reason, maybe things don't work out with that friend, or it doesn't. It isn't quite the friendship you thought it was going to be. And sometimes we want to guard ourselves from those feelings so we don't engage, or we engage on such a surface level that it's fine if they move, or it's fine yeah. if the friendship takes a turn, or. I think it takes an immense amount of vulnerability um, to put yourself out there on a friendship level. You know, it's like, Oh, on, on multiple levels. And, and for that, it's also as Enneagram is a really good example of, of helping us define how we interact with people as a two I'm, I'm about, and you know this Jen, cause you're mm-hmm. a two as well, other people and serving and things like that. And, I was too far to the point where it burned me and then I overcorrected. I yeah. went and said, fuck you. I don't have any friends. I'm, I'm, I'm just out. about me right. because I've been hurt so many times by, by people and using me. Mm-hmm. Now I understand that it's my fault that I did that and that I need to understand to set boundaries and, and, make sure that I, I actually honor my own boundaries because mm-hmm. it's very easy to to jump over them in order to make somebody happy as a people pleaser. I think that plays right up next to vulnerability. You know, you can't be vulnerable if you don't really know where that line is for you. And so it turns into, well, <laughs> I, I hate this. Is, is it normal to like talk about these type of things when I've only known this person a little bit? It doesn't matter. If you have the connection, then, you know, be vulnerable let this person you know mm-hmm. i think there's a lot of that people are scared to overshare oh yeah. and I, I imagine at least watching from the outside it seems like men are in that situation all the time because more than more than probably 75 percent of the time it's met with like <laughs> you know i don't know why you told me that or like men don't want to hear it from each other because they're all uncomfortable with their own feelings mm-hmm. and it's like to be able to be emotionally vulnerable with people, it takes both parties being emotionally aware, understanding their boundaries, being willing to be vulnerable. And that's a lot. That's like, that's a lot of personal growth to be able to be in all those places. Well, if you look at us, okay, Gary, I mean, Mike introduced me to Gary. Mm. And then I think you came here the first time I met Gary. Yeah, I was so we all on met together. Couch, waiting, letting you guys finish. Look at that! I'm exactly. a matchmaker. I brought you both. You guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but for us, and and as I've been thinking about it, for us to make the, I mean, leaps and bounds of of trust that we have in one another, and 
to talk about things, albeit with microphones in front of us, but to have that level of vulnerability, I don't know that I would have been able to do that a year ago. Gary, would you have been able to make these types of, of conversations? Um, and, and when I say make the conversation, actually take part of it and be genuine about it. There's no way. Like, there's no way. Like, I just think, like, even, like, over, like, the last two weeks, like, I feel like I've grown so much then or, you know, like, in the last two two weeks, you know, since we've seen each other. Um, I had to actually, like, schedule, like, an appointment with my therapist just to talk to her, just to tell her about things that, you know, like, I've achieved and done and stuff like that. Like, where I was last year or, like, two years ago, I was not, like, in a space to talk about the things you know that that we talk about you know being vulnerable crying failing letdowns divorce breakups different types of addictions and stuff like that you know because like like us as guys like we're just I mean for me like I'm I'm definitely judged um you know like I've definitely talked about some of the things that people have said to me you know just about that I shouldn't be talking about X or Y or Z or like it says a lot about them. Yeah. yeah. About you. I'm like, how the hell do you get to tell me what I get yeah. to talk about? Right. Yeah. And like, I just had a conversation with a friend today about that. And like, I, I was just telling her about how thankful I am, you know, of, of the growth, you know, that I've experienced and the things that I've achieved and stuff like that. And, um, I'm just happy, you know, like, um, so, so over like the last, two weeks i've cried twice really no really and for me oh, i just listened to the episode where i was gone and yeah. you said did you were in that moment you're trying yeah. to figure out i know so many men like that yeah it's crazy because like, i can't even remember the last time they cried yeah like for me like i i like before that i didn't cry for like two years and like that was something that i was trying to like talk with my therapist about was like you need to like let some of this stuff go you know and for me i was just like at first like when she said that i laughed because i was like the fuck like i'm not gonna cry like we don't need to cry yeah right yeah but yeah you know like i did and i mean like i felt like a lot better um and it was interesting because like you know like i i just thought of you guys you know like i thought of the show and stuff like that and i just thought like this space that we have now it's not normal no it no. should be and, yeah. and yeah like it definitely should be you're right i hate that word because i think shoulding is like everybody gets this. there's yeah. some people that are not going to be comfortable yeah. but listening maybe is like the best way for them to like yeah. learn about that stuff but man i i agree but i think that it takes a lot to get to a point where you have trust in the people that you're sharing with yeah. and i think a lot of times you know speaking of community you have Jen, you, you spoke about the the deep relationships that you've built. Gary, you, you've talked about relationships that you've broken apart. Mike, you have made leaps and bounds within yourself so that you're more willing to open up about the challenges you've had in the past. It's taken a lot of work individually for us to come together. Now, whether we knew, obviously, three and a half months ago, we had no idea that the three of us or four of us would be sitting here. But the work that we put in prior to that allowed us to get to a point where now I think we're leapfrogging personally, individually, and getting to even better places. You mentioned that in the last two weeks, you have grown. I know that I've actually felt like I've I've made a pretty big change for my, not a change. I've just, I've reached a a threshold and and moved past it into a much better place for myself. Mike, you have done the exact same thing with, with regards to moving past some of the traumatic events, even of the last year with your relationship and things like that. What about you? A year ago, do you think that you could have said, Jen, I I feel confident saying that you could have maybe not two years ago. Two years ago, could you Honestly, maybe a year ago, it would have been hard for me to share with people that were kind of more strangers. Like, honestly. I I, I totally believe that. How about you, though, with with your experience and having that trust? Is it was it hard or is it harder to to find that trust now? Um, now that you've kind of 
done the self-reflection and, and realized that the, you know, some of those trouble spots, you acknowledge them? Um, I mean, like, in other people? Yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because that's what it's about. Yeah. We, I, we've I, had the capability of coming together. I think my together. filter is a little bit easier. I can see through people a little bit easier now mm -hmm. and I already could because I was kind of I'm also I'm, I'm high on the two also yeah but uh no by going through my own shit and and it's funny because I had counseling today with or Gary would put it therapy but um <laughs> my counselor he he basically said uh you're you you're about done with me huh I'm like well, what do you mean really yeah wow. <laughs> he goes you he was gave me a compliment he's like from the guy i met a year ago or a year and a half ago or whatever he goes you are totally different totally different business you already had confidence in business things like that but now you just have a lot you exude more confidence that's what you put out there mm -hmm. and and i'm like wow i didn't feel like i was done with you but okay so now Maybe we're just it's moving to he accepts that you're in a place where seeking out a different therapist might give you that next leap in growth. Yeah. You know, cause I bet you spe specialized therapist only work in these parameters and then they go, okay, now you got the next one. Mm -hmm. Cause I think a lot of therapists I've, I've heard people say that it's, there's a certain point where you, they need to go to somebody else. So it doesn't become a dependent relationship right. and. That's a huge compliment, though. It's almost like I'm graduating. Yeah. <laughs> but for for other people, I can see it on them. I don't, you know, I don't know how to describe it, but when I can, when I couldn't see my own self, and now I can, and now I can look at like Gary or Jen or you, well, and I'm like, if I didn't know you, I would be able to see it on you and be like, oh man, we need to talk, you know. But now it's. I looked for those people to try, kind of draw them in. Mm -hmm. That's the best part about healing yourself or like looking within yourself is like, you know, real quick who you want to connect with mm -hmm. because there's just a, it's a, a vibe and energy. That's just, you can't fake. And I've cut a bunch of people out of my life yeah. that are like friends where they're like, Oh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be talking about that. I'm like, why? Yeah. Why? Why shouldn't I? Because you say so? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. if you that. do actually question them, do they have a response or is it just because? Well, their their thing, they go towards the negative, which is people are not going to want to be around you if they know about your past or about this. I'm like, That means that they haven't why? done the work within themselves. Why wouldn't they want to? I think yeah. it actually Because I can at least be honest that. with you. Yeah. Exactly. And tell you my past and show you the direction I've gone. Yeah, it's not always been a linear straight line. I, I would know, much rather have that. But it's been a yeah. journey. I would much rather have somebody in my life that I feel like is being honest with me and being truthful. And we're all human. Yes. Like, we're, we're all human. I mean, <laughs> we all make mistakes. So who am I to be like, your mistake is worse than my mistake, so yeah. I can't be around you. Like, yeah. what? And, and having that, I... I I appreciate what you just said so much because through all of the work that I've done, I can see when people react. I, I understand that that is not coming from like maybe this moment, maybe not even yesterday or, the, or a week ago. It's coming from something that occurred a long time ago and that there is an internal pain there that is buried so deep. Maybe they're not ready to talk about it. Maybe they're not ready to confront it. But I know that it's not this moment and the response that they're giving me that is the reality of it. It's something that happened a long, long time ago and maybe somebody did something bad to them or whatever it might be. But that has allowed me to open my eyes up. But also to your point, because I did overcorrect and cut way too many people out. Because a lot of it was just topical. Oh, we're just going to drink beers. No, I, Not because I that. want more from my relationships. Yeah. I would rather have three amazing friends that I can share literally anything with than 50 people that I just go get drunk with or, or talk about sports. And, and I it love that. Old. Yeah. It does get old yeah. because we grow as, as people. I mean, physically, mentally emotionally if you're not growing you're dying exactly and and we are all dying but we have the opportunity to grow 
we have the opportunity to help each other grow. Mm -hmm. And and I think it's incredibly selfish to not not engage that when you have the opportunity. That doesn't mean you have to go be a pastor or you don't have to be lead a a nonprofit or something like that, but if the old lady needs help getting her groceries to the car, go ahead, help out. If you see somebody that's down, hey man, you all right? Make that connection. Allow yourself to be vulnerable with them because that is what helps you in the community. Mike is a, a big part of the community because he's a, a real estate broker that mm-hmm. it moves in and out. Jen, you've got the church mm-hmm. that you're so involved with. Gary, you've got basketball with the kids and, and, and how you're tied into that. And so when you start with yourself and you, and you help yourself, then everyone around you gets better. Maybe it's just a little bit. Yeah. Maybe it's just a smile for five minutes, but it allows you to have that impact on people. The question I'm going to ask Jen now is, have you started to think about how you're going to approach a new community down there? A little bit. Um, it's interesting being in this place where I'm like starting over completely, mm-hmm. um, having done so much of that personal work already. And it's going to be really interesting because I'm going to know pretty quick who I want to spend time with and who I'm like, okay, this is going to be this type of relationship. Mm-hmm. It's going to be our kids are friends. Cool. That's it. <laughs> like, and I think that by and large, the, a lot of relationships are just that they, yeah. and they're, I don't even know if you call them relationships. Yeah. You, like they're, good acquaintances. Exactly. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And to be honest, like, it's going to be a lot of like seeking out things that I love and seeing, just seeing what's out there and kind of, you know, throwing the ball at the wall and see what comes back type of thing. Um, but I'm also in that place where I am fine if it takes a long time. Like I have friends that I keep in really close contact with that I don't see I mean, maybe once a month, mm-hmm. but I talk to them almost every day. Like, so I'm, I'm not, I feel fulfilled. Mm-hmm. Like I don't need much beyond good acquaintances in person if I'm honest because I have found those people that I connect with that I'm vulnerable with that I know I could tell anything to and they've told me they can tell me anything and that means more than distance to me yeah you know especially so, in the, with the technology available today. exactly so I'm I'm looking at it from a much more like chill calm perspective when I moved here it was only 45 minutes from where I came but it was far enough that it was like I'm rarely going to see the people that I but I still kept in touch with some people but when I moved here I didn't really know myself super well it was like seven years ago and I was still kind of trying to figure things out and I got burned a few times pretty early on where I was like oh okay <laughs> not gonna engage in that friendship and I just don't think to see that happening this time because I'm ready like, I, I understand my boundaries really well now. I understand who I am. I understand what works for me, what doesn't work for me, you know. And I'm also so much more chill with just letting people be who they are. Yeah. You know, and not, ex- not to... expecting things from them. It's just like, yeah, do you. Do your thing. Like, I've become much more um, open to just do you. Do do you. I'm not going to tell you what to do. As long as it doesn't affect me and mine, like, do you. Whereas, and, like, before, I think I was expecting things to just, you know, well, we like this, so it means we're going to be the same with everything else. And then when that didn't work out, when there's something that I was like, whoa, I don't agree with that, or I don't philosophically agree with that, or whatever, it it threw me for a loop. I'm not, I don't think that'll be the case this time. So I have a feeling it's going to be a lot more just fun. Yeah. <laughs> I can't think of a better way to put it. It's just going to be more fun because I'm just ready i guess you brought up a uh something that i want to ask the guys and get your your thoughts on this you said that you have very close friends that you talk to almost every day maybe only see once a month but you're in pretty constant contact Mm -hmm. i think that guys are different in that that we may go days weeks (laughs) maybe even months between when we connect with the the people that truly are are important to us but we don't talk to them on a daily basis um i i mean you three are who i talk to i have a few other friends that probably every couple of days i check in with but other than that it's 
it's fairly rare for me to talk to people like that. What, what about you, Mike? <laughs> it was funny because I was looking at our group chat and I'm like, nobody had said anything since Friday. I'm like, did I get kicked out of the group <laughs> chat? Because <laughs> what happened? I was like, nobody said anything to each other on Saturday. There's Are no sure? messages. Yeah. Are you sure? Really? <clears throat> and uh, but for myself, I can I go some time without talking to people. I mean, I talk to people all day long for work yeah you know i'm making calls or just checking in with past clients or whatever but you know i like my buddy jeff who i've known since fourth grade who lives in utah um it sucked when a lot of my friend, like the people i would talk to every day or want to go hang out and do stuff with they all moved away for a lot for the most part until just recently you know with you guys but and then you're moving away. So I'm like, what the fuck? That's I like, think it's a you thing. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> you know, but so Jeff moved to Utah. My buddy Ben moved back up to Alaska. Um, and then my other buddy. Uh, so you're saying you need to travel more. Right. Well, I and I have and I've yeah. visited them. Good. And so it means you come visit. I mean, me. I'll go to Arizona. You're you're yeah. gonna grow the show down there, you know, <laughs> yeah. listener wise. So no, we're just gonna surprise you one day. The three of us like, Hi. ding dong, <laughs> we're here, <laughs> and we're gonna have a, I a you sleeping bag and a pillow. I <laughs> like, I hope you guys brought your swimsuits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll just be us. And I brought the speedo. Does that yeah. work? <laughs> no, you got that. You got the speedo oh, game, bro. I would so love that. I would so. No, love that. not I would. the speedo part. Not the speedo. Leave that at home no just the, the surprise yeah. visit i yeah. love that <laughs> think, that's think not what very I, that's carefully not what I before you what you wish for i was like line. i don't know about the speedo but yeah. i'm sure skylar will be like whoa yeah. <laughs> there's three dudes out there that should not be in speedos what the fuck are they doing What's happening? Our yeah. did is you invite them yeah is it a and they're holding yeah, hands like, uh, exactly. convention dancing holding and singing <laughs> the chorus line but when i when i don't talk to somebody for quite or anybody for a while i feel it internally and really? i'm like my anxiety goes up my depression goes up i'm like what is going on what so i have to do a self-check and be like i haven't i haven't really reached out to anybody so you know i need to do that and then once i saw my counselor today i was like oh man i feel so much better just talking to somebody you're a verbal that's processor. not my kid I'm or not my processor. girlfriend or you know mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, I, I process so much better when I just talk it out. Yeah. Huh. Oh my gosh. Well, and and I mean that's why this works so well, and I think why when when we leave here, we all kind of have that that smile because mm -hmm. we've talked about some pretty heavy things every show. I mean, we have fun, but we've all actually had people say to us that, "Boy, that's some pretty heavy stuff that you're getting into there." And and, I'm like, and yes. I've lost friends since the the podcast where I have like the really yeah hey man you really sifting. lost friends you yeah think? well I, you know and they weren't whatever. great friends to begin yeah. with right exactly they which is if, a weird place to be in where you want to accept it and you're like okay but there's you have to let yourself grieve even even if it's just a little like oh man well then like, COVID hit and I was down for two weeks so I'm like oh, whatever <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and, and that'll help what about you Gary. Um, for me, I'm notoriously horrible at keeping in contact with people that I love and appreciate. Um, one of my friends moved to San Francisco. He's probably like one of my best friends. I don't do a very good job of staying in contact with him. Uh, another one of my friends moved to Canada and I just... Well, they don't have phones up there. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have to use like smoke signals and stuff. Exactly. Like that. Really just awkward. Tie, just tie it to a moose antler. Yeah. yeah it's very windy oh, okay. down here too. It's tough. I thought you had to use one of those big... Horror <laughs> things to talk to Canadians, like but, uh, but it's different. Yeah, right. Exactly. But yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm just I'm horrible at staying in contact with people that like I don't see like at work or I don't see at school or I don't know. It's just tough. Um, I don't know. Like, I have friends and people you know that I love and appreciate and stuff, but you know, sometimes I'll go weeks without, you know, talking to them and they live in the same city as I do or something. And the friend that I talked to today, I mean, we talked on the phone for an hour and it felt like, you know, we didn't miss a beat. Yeah. And, um, I haven't talked to her in probably at least a year. And she just called and she was asking about the podcast and she was, she's uh, going to be buying a house down in Texas. And she was just asking about that. And, um, so it was, 
nice just to talk to her, but man, I suck at staying in contact with people. Like, well, and at least you you understand that, and you know that that's a place for growth because yeah. when you come out of those those conversations like you had today, and you're yeah. like, you know, I really miss talking to that person. Yeah. I, yeah. you know, I need to reconnect with them. Yeah, because I'm I'm the same way. I have a very close friend that lives in L.A. Yeah. and we get into routines we have everyday life and something gets away with away from us yeah you know they called you and and you've forgotten to return their call and all of a sudden it's three weeks later and i had a you know a major disease or yeah (laughs) what it just every everyday life and when you blink, I mean, just think, okay, today is the 18th. Yeah. Yesterday feels like it was New Year's Day. Like, I'm pretty sure we're in December, right? Yeah, no? right? No, I mean, honestly, when, when, you're, when you're trying to prostate, process things, and I, and I talk about the 16 years and blinking, Yeah. I lose track of weeks. And it's not like I have anything overly exciting in my life. I'm not jet-setting around the world, you know, to music tours or anything like that. It's just... <laughs> there's just life yeah and kids and and i can't imagine moving and it's and the crazy, yeah so it's it's those things that you have to you have to be mindful of yeah and and if it means that you write it down yeah. and say okay i'm going to contact one person every two days like or every, every Sunday. week yeah, yeah. just call yeah. somebody yeah. whatever it might be I, I find the group chat that's, you know, I have, like I said, I have a few other friends that I have a group chat with them. Yeah. And so I keep in contact with them. But other than, I mean, there's three of them in there and you three and yeah. that's about the extent of it. And there's really only my friend in LA that I would really like to keep in more contact with because of the, you know, what we talked about earlier where, you know, like Mike, I have, cut a tremendous amount of people out of my life yeah. for my own good because i know that they didn't have my best interest at heart they they couldn't care less yeah i i, I shouldn't i shouldn't say that there are a few other people that well, i think sometimes cutting people out is also a, a self-care way mm-hmm. at first because we can't get to know ourselves if there's if there's a ton of noise. Yes. Like if there's a ton mm. of noise going on, you're just it's so easy to just be distracted by what's going on around you and being like, well, this person's we had that conversation. It gets loud, you know. Yeah, so I yeah. think it's nothing like wrong that. with being semi solitary. Yeah. You know, and it's like I think it just depends on the personality of the people that you're reaching out to and the people that are in your circle that you trust. Yeah. Um. I mean, I've got one friend that like she is terrible at texting she is terrible at calling she gets in a routine just like what you're saying and we will go months without talking Uh. but like we pick it up every time and she's somebody i know i could call if i was in a crisis if i was an issue if i needed help she would drop everything but i I don't talk to her that much i told her i was moving and she was like okay cool and then her sister-in-law is like one of my best friends my friend melissa called my friend maria and was like how are you doing with the move and she's like i'm fine what do you well, I'm fine. And Melissa was like, well, you didn't cry your eyes out. And Melissa yeah. lives three hours away and Maria lives closer. And it's just interesting watching all the different reactions. Yeah. The one that lives closer to me is like, I'm happy for them. Like, I'm what do you, <laughs> this is because she knows we'll always be friends. Yeah. It just means it'll be a little different now. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I think keeping in mind that different personalities are just going to take it differently. You know, I've got one friend that Marco Polo is with me like every single day. And I love her to death. And I've got another friend that I'll talk to like once a week. And those two are like my best friends. Yeah. yeah. And then I've got these periphery that I don't see or talk to often. Yeah. And it's okay. You know, and then I've got the people that are physically in proximity close to me that I see all the time that I love and trust. Yeah. And I hardly ever talk to them outside of running into them. You know, it's just kind of part of human nature. Like for me, like it's kind of funny, like my friends that I have that like I was super good friends with like at one point and I still consider them like great people and i love them but like i just haven't like sat on the phone with them and talk with them for for a while and then they'll just like message me like out of the blue and just be like say something about the show or you know something we talked about and i'm like you know i'm glad you guys are listening but you know i need to be better about like just scheduling a sunday or scheduling you know some time just to be like how's life how are you doing you don't even have to call them you can just send a yeah. random text you yeah, yeah. Like hey Marco thinking Polo. about you like I like Marco Polo for that reason. Yeah, what's personal? What do you mean? 
What Marco is it? Polo. Uh, Marco Polo. Marco Polo is like a video app. app. Yeah, oh, okay. it's a video app, but it's it's almost like a walkie-talkie video app. Like you can't talk over each other, mm-hmm. which is actually so you nice. just send video messages. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so it's, it's just like, like a carousel. Or, oh, oh yeah. yeah, it's a lot like that, but okay. um, you can send responses like, and you can see if you each person's there live. Oh. And I don't know. I just like that. I get uh, I get the real real behind it, yeah, and yeah. it can be twenty seconds. It could be okay. one of my friends sent me a nine minute Marco, and I was like, yeah. oh my word, <laughs> you know. So it's like it can be short as fast as you want it to be. You can send pictures, you can put up a screenshot, and then do a voiceover. It like I, I love the app because it's got so much flexibility, okay. and we just it can be so short. And in fact, I've built a friendship at a distance like that. Her husband mm-hmm. was one of my childhood best friends. She's the one that Marcos me every day. And we just reconnected about a year and five months ago. Yeah. And we both agreed recently that we were like, dang it, we really should have been friends sooner. <laughs> <laughs> we really should have like, I don't know, because like he was my childhood best friend and he married her and we should have clicked, but it just, we just wasn't right. Like, yeah. I don't know, like we don't really have much to say about it, but we've, I've known her for 10, 12 years. Yeah. Anyway, so, so does it like delete the messages like after a certain time? You can, time, but it's or? just wow, a Gary. giant carousel. You can scroll through all the videos. Yeah. This isn't Snapchat. Oh, okay. I mean, I I don't know. I don't know anything about. It. I mean, I thought Marco Polo was a pool game. I don't know. No, I, I, I thought it. you were talking about like just like hollering <laughs> no. at people. I, I had no idea that you were. Talking right. about no, it's that. a great app. You can right. have a group Marco chat. You can have a one on one. You can yeah. you can delete as you go if you want. But <laughs> honestly, I I love it for those reasons. She runs a Zumba business with her Marco okay. and people from a distance will follow along with her class that she records on Marco really? and they pay for it monthly. And then she gets rid of the chat until the next month and the people pay for Zumba access for the month. Wow. I was like, that's really smart. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's, hmm. That is. They follow smart. along and they can follow live or they can Cha-ching. watch the recording later. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I don't know. So I, I think that don't feel too bad. Yeah. It just means you haven't find the found the right kind of communication that works for you. Yeah, like one of my friends, like I'm super thankful because he'll actually just like, he will never like regular call me. Like he'll FaceTime me, which I love because it gives me a chance to like really read his like micro expressions and like talk to him. You would and love see. Marco then. Yeah, yeah, Marco's yeah. so nice. Like I think the thing that I love most about Marco is getting that real, real reaction. Yeah. Like, the same friend when I told her I was moving, I did not expect her to be so upset because wow. I'm like, we build our friendship from a distance. She lives still in Tri City. It was like three hours from here. Yeah, and and it just devastated her. <laughs> and I was like, I mean, it took us to a different level in our friendship. But I was like, I, I mean, I love her. Like yeah. I, we've become really good friends. But I didn't realize what I meant to her. Yeah, because I, part of me was like, I really looked up to her. And I didn't realize that it was mutual in so many regards. She's a terrible communicator communicator that way, but I don't know. You should check out Marco Polo. Yeah, like I'm definitely going to have to try that. It's funny because... Uh, uh, if you have their phone number, then you yeah. can invite them to it through uh, texting. And it's like, yeah, that's how you find people through phone numbers. One of my friends, though, like he will literally only call me. Like on times when I call him, he like thinks it's like an emergency or something like that. What's the matter? <laughs> and I'm like, it's nothing bad. I was just calling to say hi. He's like, okay, because he just never called me. So it was just one of those things to where it was like interesting like why that says a lot about you then <laughs> yeah, I know. Wow, Gary, you must be really i'm so bad Gary sends up smoke signals I know. yeah right so you're telling me if you go silent for like two days in the thread i will be like gary yeah <laughs> like i'm here guys i'm good but yeah i don't know like i definitely have had people like that i love and i appreciate and it's no like shade or anything i just i have to be better about like communication and like one of my friends um, he, he's in San Francisco and I just, he's like, we need to video chat. We need to video chat. And then like a year will go by and we still haven't video chatted Dude. or set up. Like yeah, a I, I'm, I'm going to abdicate for Marco all over the place then. Yeah. yeah, yeah Cause yeah. it's, the, it's the same thing. It's a lot like just FaceTiming, but it's yeah. one at a time. I'll have to do that thing. I think you'd love it. Okay. So I have a question to propose to you guys because for women, I think sometimes it's easier to make friends in some regards. Um, how do you guys make new friends? Hmm. <laughs> well, I know Will's common. answer. I know. I, 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 know. I was actually, I wanted to make that part of the progression of what we were saying because. Because it's very different for women. Oh, absolutely. And, and <laughs> the way I kind of look at it is 
Wait, why are y'all laughing at me? I just thought you were going to say grinder. No. <laughs> <laughs> he's over it. He's grinder. Like, oh, forget about it. Oh, he's coming at me with grinder. <laughs> anyway, not that there's anything wrong with grinder. I didn't even know it was real until I Googled it. And I was like, holy shit, this is on the internet? Anyway. Uh, no, one thing that I found, and, and I'd be remiss to mention a few people that I... I meet with and I'm involved with on a business level and also very deeply into the mental health stuff, but just not on, in a public manner. But for me, I stripped a whole bunch of relationships away and I kind of look at it like it's an opportunity to rebuild relationships. Hopefully some mm -hmm. of them I can bring back on better terms for me different boundaries exactly that is a thing that and is absolutely a thing because i didn't understand boundaries a year ago year and a half ago or whatever and now i feel like i can have a much healthier relationship with people that i didn't even know was even like realistic to to have a relationship that is fulfilling both for both of us because i have itches that to like help people that most people don't and i understand that now mm -hmm. but i also know that i'm not going to over share or over please to the point where i resentment starts to build in me and that's the biggest if i had to kind of nail down an emotion that that i really really started to it, it really started to hurt me was resentment because i just felt used and abused and discarded as if i was just there for somebody's pleasure you know you're on whether, the like quintessential enneagram two journey yeah oh, that's you're like on this place because part of the growth journey for twos is learning where their boundaries are and mm -hmm. you know going internal and thinking about what's important to them so you can put up proper boundaries so that when you engage in relationships of any kind friendships relationships that you don't get to that point of resentment because it's so easy for twos to go there because you're like look I'm putting myself out there look I'm like spending all this time with you look I'm like doing all this stuff like and it's not being reciprocated but that's but if you had the right boundaries up you would have seen that they wouldn't aren't capable of reciprocating yes. and it's not their fault it's their it's at the place that they are like everybody's at different growth points you know and I've I've stopped being upset with people when they can't reciprocate I, I grieve the relationship loss of what I thought it was for a second and then I have to let myself move on from it and it's that's new for me and really? i've been on this journey for a while yeah like coming to that place of i guess non-judgment and i didn't even realize i was placing oh I had no idea i was doing that to people until i get to the point of resentment <laughs> and and that's exactly where i was mm -hmm. my problem was is that the resentment it hit me like a ton of bricks like i got clubbed over the head with a hundred pieces of uh or you know two by fours and it was kind of so shocking to me that that I felt that way, that I had shoved so much resentment down, mm -hmm. continuing to chase that high of, of acceptance, uh, acceptance and, 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 and appreciation mm -hmm. and love. And if it's it's like enlightenment hmm. to not have that weighing me down so that free. I don't give a fuck if you if you like me. I just want you to be a good person. And I, my, my level of empathy has actually gone up. I, you know, you, people may feel like I don't have much empathy in, in, in reality, I have a tremendous amount of empathy. Mike, what about you to answer Jen's question? How do you make friends? And has that, and I, and I'm going to ask you the same thing, Gary, has that changed as your journey through mental health has progressed? Um, a lot of my friends have really just kind of come from my, the past. I mean, like Gary, I used to work with you. I worked with Jen. I knew through, um, baseball Sports, with the kids yeah. grinder, <laughs> but like yeah. a, a lot of my friends, yeah, that too. <laughs> a lot of my friends have come from like maybe th through high school or through school or through activities that I've done with sports and, and things like that. But you know, COVID kind of really separated 
the fat sure from did. the meat, you know? It's like, sure oh, I don't even talk to this, hardly any of the guys on my softball team anymore because, well, we're not playing, you know? Or, I don't know. It's I haven't really made a ton of new friends lately. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure how I would go about that. Because I still keep a lot of people at arm's length. Yeah. But and I, but I think that that's all right. Because I think that we, once we discover what our mental bandwidth is for relationships in all manner, it's, a, it's almost a protection thing. And I'm sure Jen can second this, that you're like, okay, it's all right that I don't have all these relationships, that I don't have a lot of uh, surface level connections that I'm more focused on true relationships. Gary, I'm going to ask you now building relationships. Um, and then how has that changed for you? For me? Like, I feel like I was building relationships before in like toxic areas and stuff like that. Um, uh, you know, like Mike is bobbing his head. A, mightily. a lot of relationships, you know, from, you know, clubs and bars and like you know maybe uh, maybe i'd meet somebody you know like at the gym or something like that and you know we'd have something in common um but now you know like i feel like the older i'm getting um the more that like my like mindset is starting to shift and sway and change the more that i'm meeting like friends of friends you know it's kind of like this you know like i knew mike and now i'm meeting will and now i'm meeting jen and stuff like that so it's like people that already have my like same mentality and like my same you know same wavelength yeah exactly yeah. so i just feel like um uh, so i mean like i probably made like you know like a few good friends um you know from from work and stuff you know like i work with like a few good people but just uh for the most part like it's just been through you know like other people because that's I feel a really like, good point though yeah. like when you're on the same wavelength yeah um that's honestly how I've built a lot of friendships here has been like, there's been like one person I've connected with and then I've met their friends or, yeah. and that's kind of what I'm hoping for in Arizona is that I'll yeah. just connect with somebody and it will turn into, you know, being able to connect with other people. Yeah. I mean, for me, a lot of times it's hobbies. Yeah, a lot yeah. of times it's like, what am I into? And mm -hmm. yeah, that's, but it also depends on what your hobbies are. Like if yeah. your hobbies yeah, are bar that, hopping, then yeah. it's not going <laughs> to like go over super well, you know? <laughs> or, I mean, even, I mean, beer league softball, there's a lot of toxic shit that happens mm -hmm. in that kind of stuff. So, or it was, it was a beer league, but. Oh, well, whatever it is. I mean, there's, <laughs> there are ways to, you know, you could be in, you know, uh, summer league basketball that yeah. everyone goes and gets completely wasted afterward. <laughs> so you're, I think you become more mindful of, of what you want. And that's not selfish. That's yeah. something that I think when we're younger, we think that. If we're gonna, if we're only gonna think about ourselves, that's so that's selfish. But no, it's actually you're setting yourself up better for for everyone. And and, and for me too, uh, that's that's something I think that I've learned like a lot from this podcast. You know, especially Jen too is like just putting up like positive barriers and mm -hmm. like it's okay to do that. Like 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 I found myself saying that so much lately, and it's so funny because I just. So I just have this like little voice in the back of my head and it's little Jen. Voice. Yeah, exactly. And like, <laughs> like I, I, I talk to like family, family members about that. I'll talk to friends about that. Like I'll talk to my roommate and her brother about it's okay to put up barriers and it's okay to like, you know, say you have to be asleep by this time. Cause you have to, you know, wake up at three 30 in the morning to go to work or whatever else. And I just think before, like my like mindset was like, you can't do that because you have to appease. Nice. Yeah, you it's have to appease your audience. You have to, you know, be there for the people and stuff like that. And sometimes to be there for the people, is you got to put up some barriers. And I never really honestly realized that until recently. And like clear is kind. Right. And like clear is kind. Not, yeah, not yeah, nice is kind. Yeah, yeah. It's clear is kind. Like yeah. you can be. I was actually just talking about this with my best friend today. And even in communication and relationships, it's like even if what they received is unkind yeah. does not mean that what you said was unkind because how people receive things you yeah. can't help you yeah. can't you know but if you're clear with them I, I can't think of a kinder thing to do to set a clear boundary of like yeah. 
I eat, I mean, this is kind of a silly one. I, I won't eat after 6 p.m. Mm-hmm. because of blah, blah, blah. Like, you don't even need to say blah, blah, blah. It's just, mm-hmm. I just don't eat after 6 p.m. Yeah. And if that inconveniences of their people, then they can say, like, well, is there anything, you know, and then they can engage in that. But yeah. it's your job to hold that boundary of 6 p.m. Yeah. yeah. It's not their job yeah. to hold it for you. Yeah. Right. And it's like, I, that has been harder than it sounds. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, I think that that's a very hard thing for any of us to actually engage our own boundaries and have the self-confidence that it takes to impose those boundaries on other people. In yeah. a kind, loving way. Yeah, because exactly. I let myself get to a place of like boiling over like a volcano and then all of a sudden I'm like, I'm not eating after 6 p.m. <laughs> you know, and then I'm mad about it and they're all yeah. going, whoa. Look like, what's have you seen there? the movie Gremlins? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you a little hangry? Like, what's going on? And I, that was been part of the lesson that I learned during the pandemic was I, I was given jet fuel of like, okay, you understand you have boundaries. Well, how do you implement them in a way that is heard and is kind and is like helpful to the situation? Because it's absolutely possible to put up boundaries where you're like, okay, that was, <laughs> you must have been thinking this for a while. Like you, yeah. you seem really upset about it. And then it creates emotions in other people. But, but being really clear with people yeah. with that kind attitude can just it allows people to get to know you better. Yeah. Like when you're clear and I realized this was actually a really like hard thing for me to realize is I'd been married 15 years and I realized that there was a bunch that my husband didn't know about me hmm. because I didn't tell him. Yeah. I didn't say it really bothers me when you blah, blah, blah. Or like, <laughs> it really bothers me when I get put in this position. I know it's circumstantial, but I just never wanted to make him uncomfortable. I didn't want to like upset him to the point where I was like, is this worth, like I did the big stuff where I was like, okay, this is a big problem for me. But the minutia where like now I feel like this move has been really interesting for me because I've set such really clear boundaries with my family over the last year and a half, which has been really funny. My mom told me today that my, um, my social needs bother her sometimes. And I said, you're allowed to feel that way. That's okay. Yeah. Cause we're on a timeline for moving, right? Like we got stuff to do and I'm like making time to see people. And she's like, we don't have time. And I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> like this is important to me. Yeah. Exactly. You we know? have the time. It's how we choose to spend it. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, look, this is not judgment on you or, or I'm, I don't want to make you upset, but I will regret not spending time with people when I leave. Like yeah. this is really important to me. And she was like, Okay. And walked away. Not out of really like anger. She just was like, I don't agree. And I'm like, that's fine. You don't have to. That's a very mom thing to say. Too. Very. Right. But it was been interesting now in this move is there are so many things that I was like, I, there was a ton of weight on my shoulders because I run the house. Like yeah. I, and now we're moving and I'm, we are embedded in the house that we're in. And I just was like having like panic, felt like near panic attacks. I've never had a true one, but the point where I'm like, nah, feeling like this buzz, like all the time. And my family knows me well enough now that they know, okay, I'm going to take this because I know that's going to be a lot for you. And then the other people in the house and we're all spreading the responsibility in a way that I feel like I can breathe hmm. and I didn't have to ask. Yeah. Like normally I have to beg and plead and ask and remind and nag and da, da, da. And it's been, I think friends can be like that too. Like when you're trying to build community, if you let people know who you are and know you on that level, it, you attract people that just make sense to you hmm. because you just accidentally weed out the people that are like, I'm sorry, I can't eat before 6 p.m. Yeah. I have to eat at 7. This is such a dumb analogy, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like, sense. there's yeah. just, and, and that's how you can find your community faster is just being really clear. Yeah. Of like, this is what works for me. This is what doesn't. I feel like for me, like, it's just funny, just the things that we've talked about, like, on the show. And I've, like, randomly, like, come across podcasts that talk about, like, you know, putting up boundaries or before, you know, we had talked about like limiting your, uh, like limiting what you're doing, like throughout the day. And then later I found like a podcast and a book about that. So I just appreciate this podcast. It, 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 it is, uh, it is eye opening to see that as we, we begin to wind down here and, and we have schedules that we do need to meet and things like that. So what do we have final say wise, Jen, that, mm on community or anything like that if you had a few words on on what what you you want to see in your new community what is a what is a goal that you have for your new community um honestly i think the goal for my new community is to find people that are willing to be clear with me Mm -hmm. as clear as i'll be with them because 
nothing is more frustrating when you're like, I'm working really hard to be clear with you and I feel like I don't know you at all or, you know, and so I just want to find that reciprocity with somebody else that wants to be as clear and understands the importance of it without being overbearing and like, you know, just somebody who's clear is kind. It's actually a Brene Brown. Um, oh, saying. she's great. I love yeah. Brene Brown. I love her. Oh yeah. Gary, what about you? What was the question? <laughs> What's your grinder username? <laughs> oh, uh, no. What? Magic what? Mike at six nine six nine. For community, what is something that moving forward you want to see in your community? For me, I mean, honestly, like, I, I just want to see more people that don't just have their hand out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think for me, um, like, I've been trying to give give back more to people and help more and, like, use my life, like, as, you know, like a, like a tool or whatever just to show, you know, I messed up here, here, and here. You know, you could do this, this, and this right. And rather than, like, getting things back, I don't want anything back. Like, I want that person to use their life or use their tool to go out and help other people and stuff and like slowly but surely like i've been seeing that and like for me like that's what i want more of like i want to see more people oriented people yeah just like people just not not expecting shit just going out and fucking helping other people like that's the name of the game like you shouldn't be holding all the tools and stuff like that for yourself and i think it's just sad because like i had a, a talk today with a rival driver and you know we're just talking about our life and dating and you know just portland and the common thing was people will kind of get information and kind of hoard it for themselves rather than using their life and using their tools to go out and help other people and go out and better the community and just for me like that like that's what i want around me is people that don't have their hand up, but people that want to give and help and give back and make the world a better place. Mm-hmm. Listen to you. Mike. <laughs> Gear, Gear Bear dropping all the yeah, knowledge. Yeah, I know, man. He makes all of us look bad. That's, his, right. that's his real grinder. Yeah, right. <laughs> Gear Bear 6969. Whoa. <laughs> Gear Bear dropping it low, huh? <laughs> low, low, low. <clears throat> to the window. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, Mike. Um... Kind of on your same lines, Gary, yeah. with people stepping up and just being kind and doing something nice for somebody else and not expecting anything in return. Yeah. Um, for example, opening the door for someone or I don't want to throw Michelle under the bus because she, she, you know, she's she's new to that in a lot of ways. But she was at the store recently and there's a mom in front of her and she was buying stuff and the the she, she had a little girl with her and she rang up the dress for the little girl and um the mom's like oh it was supposed to be this price and she looked at it what's on there she's like uh i can't afford it just put it back and she had the perfect opportunity to be like hey i'll buy it for her. but at that point i think in her process she's more of well i don't want to embarrass her yeah you know and, and i get real. that and mm-hmm. i get that but for me I would have stepped up and been like, I'll get it for her. How much, what is, what's the difference? And just add it to mine or, or whatever. Yeah. So I would like to see people step up and do certain or do nice things for other people. It doesn't even have to cost money. Mm -hmm. Just even a smile or a compliment. Hey, love your hair today. I love your shirt. Love your, you know, cause there's so many people. If you look at people walking down the street, so many people's faces or eyes are on the ground or in their phone or, not present. Yeah. You know, not present is the best way to. Yeah. So I want you to know that's a cultural thing in this area. I don't ever understand. <laughs> yeah. Growing up here and you go anywhere else and people nod at you or say hi as you walk by and here people are like, how far can I look away? <laughs> avoid from eye you? contact. Yeah. Avoid eye contact. Uh, yeah. Like what? <laughs> that's exactly right. I think the one thing that I would like to see is an increase in empathy. I'm not, and not sympathy, not sympathy at all, but empathy thinking about other people and their circumstance and not projecting yourself upon that finding ways to help them but thinking and not judging them because of their politics because of their sports team i mean we joke and have a lot of fun with that but truly empathizing that we all go through shit we've all been through shit for two years now yeah and 
we're always so quick with keyboard warriors or whatever to put somebody down because they don't agree with us or whatever it might be. And I think we have a real opportunity to show the youth that it doesn't have to be us versus them. It doesn't have to be I'm better because I believe in this or you you listen to that radio or that politician. Mm-hmm. We can all we can all be there for one another and and think positively, but it has to start with us, the adults, and and to show the kids that it doesn't we don't have to define each other and it, this isn't about identity anything. This is about we're all in this shit together and the only way we're going to get out of it is if we work together. So that's that's what I've got to say on that. Another great show, kids. It blew past well well past an hour and a half as usual. Damn. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening. As always, you can find us on the socials at Man vs. Mood, TikTok, all of the, all of the above. So with that, <coughs> we go.